Yeah, so I there will probably be no interludes in the vlog this week. I injured my ankle, can't really get around very much, definitely can't go hiking. And that's basically the only kind of interlude I know how to make. So, sorry about that. I'll try to heal <laughs> so that you can have some interludes next week. So I started the three body problem. I'm reading it on ebook, so I don't have, I can't hold it up. I mean, I guess I could show you my Kindle. But anyway, I started the three body problem. I just finished part one and I'm already completely in love with it for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> so this takes place in China in, in the year 1960, or at least part one takes place in China in 1960. And the setting is at the beginning of the Cultural Revolution. So it begins with some high intensity confrontation about certain teachings that are that are being taught in classroom settings that like no that's not the kind of thought that we're supposed to be having right now um so a lot of very like high tension social situations because of what kind of independent thought isn't allowed so I read chapter one, was very intrigued, but you know, I'm 31. It's been a minute since I've been in school. So I decided to pause and do uh, just like refresh my memory on the Chinese cultural revolution. And I ended up down such a rabbit hole because it's such a fascinating and completely tragic time in history. Uh, so I ended up doing, I ended up researching that for a little while and I stumbled on a nonfiction that is uh, written by someone who survived the Cultural Revolution and it's a first person, you know, documentation of what happened. So I started reading that. <laughs> But then I did, I did come back to the three body problem and the rest of part one takes place in this setting. And so it's fascinating to me as a historical fiction but it, this is a sci-fi book and there's aliens involved. So now part one is done and we're entering the sci-fi setting. We're actually shifting gears into that sci-fi element. So I'm trying to shift gears in my mind too. And I'm just making sure to be reading this nonfiction alongside it so that I'm not. So the side of the story that's interesting to me, this historical side of a very fascinating and tragic time in history, I'm getting out of the nonfiction so that I can get everything that I'm supposed to be getting out of the three body problem. I don't know if this nonfiction would be interesting to anyone but myself, but I'm enjoying it and it is giving me more context around the setting in this period in time that this, that the three body problem is set in. But anyway, the three body problem is translated by Ken Liu, which has quickly become one of my favorite authors. Uh, he wrote the Dandelion Dynasty, which I've technically already started book three for, but I'll wait until I'm a little bit further into it to talk to you about it because it's a thousand pages long. So I'll be reading it for a while. And Ken Liu has added to the book, to the three body problem, to his translation of it, a, a lot of editor's notes as well. So when you come across a, a, a term that was used at the time, at least in the ebook, you can click that footnote and then Ken Liu has given context. So you don't have to do a I mean, you can do all the independent research you want, but you don't have to do a ton of independent research to keep up with what's happening in the story and have the context that you need, which I think is just so useful as a reader. And already there's been a lot of introspection within the book itself as well about um, the state of humanity and about what what causes, like reflection of human nature, what causes uh, societies and individuals to get to a certain point within the novel itself, which has also been really fascinating. Oh my goodness, some some amazing lines of of introspection on humanity within just this one part that I've read so far. I'm already loving it. I'm already, I'm already so hooked <laughs> and I'm not even into the sci-fi part of it. So, I mean, I could come back to you in the next clip and tell you something very different, but so far I have loved the setup of this novel and the research trail that it's taken me down as well. Anyway, welcome to the vlog.
it turns out I did have some uh, videos on my camera roll that I could use for an interlude, so you get one. Hopefully you enjoyed the apple picking and the cat. So normally with these reading vlogs, I like to check in a few times three times is my standard but this is just this is the next time I've been able to get out here and chat with you so uh, you get two so this is gonna be a long check-in and I'm sorry for that so the three body problem I finished it I don't know how to talk about it especially spoiler free it's a tough one because it's such a slow unraveling, but I will, I will give it a go. So as I said in the first clip, the setting of this novel is during the Chinese Cultural Revolution. So the book opens up with really brutal and tragic scenes, uh, a, a, an overlying feeling of fear where uh, certain ideas and science is denounced. And uh, if you talk about it, if you teach it, then people will turn on you for fear of their own life. If certain ideas are shared and talk about, talked about in quiet, if that's revealed, then friends will turn on friends to preserve their own lives. It's a very tragic time in history, and it's a very tense setting that this book opens with and that is the continued setting throughout what is otherwise a hard sci-fi novel. So from the jump I was engrossed in this book just because of such a tense cultural setting. Then add on to that the fact that the two main perspectives that we follow, Yi and Wang, so Yi has just experienced a tragedy in her own family because of this cultural revolution that we're in and she's sent off to a re-education camp but ends up instead getting the opportunity to research or try to uh she's sent off to a secret program regarding extraterrestrial life then we have wang who is a scientist in a specific field and gets the opportunity to work on a project where people are trying to combat against an unnamed enemy but there's also this layer of it where multiple people that have been on this project who have tried to work on this and uncover certain things have taken their own lives in the midst of what they've learned. And in his perspective, we have these scenes where, for instance, he encounters a countdown that's happening, but it's only happening to him. He's the only one that can see it. And there's physical experiments that he does. There's physical things that he tries to do to understand why this is happening, what's happening, and why it's only happening to him. And he does these, he does, he does these, these things that when other people do it, they get different results. It's only him. It's, it, I do, I'm trying to keep things so vague because it's such a tense scenario. It's such a tense setting that we're in, both the setting as well as the things that are happening to these individuals that I just, and it's such a slow uncovering that I just want to not spoil it. It's so interesting because so much of this book is people sitting in rooms having conversations and yet it's so tense. It's a book filled with tension, with twists, with reveals, and with questions, philosophical questions. And it takes this idea of potentially contacting other life forms potentially potentially a first contact sort of scenario and it takes this idea and shows many perspectives many human responses and human thoughts of do we even want this is this really something that we should we just run away and hide? Should we just make ourselves as undetectable as possible? Or is this something that we would want to pursue? Is the human race even worth saving? Or rather preserving? Is the human race even worth preserving? Or should we just, just start over? Just try again, just forget it all. This is a hard science book and everything is explained to the nth degree. Every idea, every theory has hard, 
understanding of how it all comes about. Now, did I understand it? I'm not even going to try to pretend I did. I'm not even going to try to pretend I understood half of the of the hard scientific discussions had in this book, especially near the end. There were pieces that I was just like, I'm sure that's smart. <laughs> I wouldn't know. There are pieces of the book that are very stop, let's talk theories for a while, which for me, I don't mind so much because, you know, it all goes over my head. So it's like, we'll get back to the plot eventually, but I could definitely see that being a deterrent. Just the same, the characters in the book are not, that wasn't a priority. The priority in this book was the plot and the ideas and the philosophy, I think. I don't think the characters were really something that are going to feel satisfying for a character-driven reader, which is funny because that's me. I'm very much a character-led reader and there have been many uh, classic sci-fi books that are more ideas and philosophical books, some that I connect with and I run with and I love and some that I drop out of because I or, or disconnect from because I'm just like, what's to latch on to here? I feel at arm's length the whole time. But with this book, one would think that I would feel at arm's length, except that the ideas were so fascinating and the tension was so strong and the setting was so tragic that I latched onto it from the jump. From the first chapter, I couldn't get enough, even though I wouldn't say that, be it the two characters that I've mentioned or the side characters that are also very relevant to this story and get plenty of page time and plenty of philosophizing themselves, none of them, I would say, are particularly strong characters, but I don't care because I was so engrossed in the setting and in the ideas. Does that make sense? There were scenes in this book that were downright chilling and I'm finding it difficult. I've already disrupted my TBR for this month because I decided to just read the Shattered Sea trilogy on impulse and I'm having a really hard time not disrupting it again to blow through this trilogy as well. I won't because I have a couple people that would like to continue the trilogy with me so we'll read book two in October but this was, I really enjoyed this, even though so much of it went over my head. Far smarter people could probably explain this book to you far better than I could. But my dad, who's a very technological and scientifically minded man, is gonna love this. And I did too, I did too. <laughs> anyway. I've also been reading that nonfiction, so it's a very popular book. You may have heard of it. It's called Wild Swans, uh, Three Daughters Tales, I think is what it's called. I'm about halfway done with it, and it's it too is extraordinary, and it's been wonderful to read side by side with The Three-Body Problem because of the setting of The Three-Body Problem and the setting of this nonfiction. I'm learning so much. So this is a biography of three generations during the time of the Chinese uh, Cultural Revolution, starting with the author's grandmother, who was pre her, her part of the story that we primarily uh, Honan is pre-revolution. So she, at a very young age, was given away by her father to a warlord as a concubine of his. And we follow her through her upbringing. We learn a lot about some of the cultural traditions of marriage and of concubines and their role in the household. Um, her as a young mother who had to surrender her daughter to the household um, for a period of time. Even, even things like we learned a lot about feet binding. It's a look into her grandmother's life as well as her escaping that life and raising her daughter. Her daughter who during the rise of Mao, the very slow and quiet rise of Mao, the ideas of women's liberation and more respect for women that the communist uh, regime was bringing in appealed to her and so at a very young age she joined in a very strong way. So it's following that rise of Mao and of the Cultural Revolution and the promises and then the reality of it as well. We follow them through some tragic tragic times. I'm actually, I'm very surprised at the bluntness of this narrative of how 
openly she's speaking about certain things so I ended up looking into it a little bit um, and the author of this book is now she now lives in London she's a British citizen and this book this biography has been banned in mainland China so I don't think there's been any censorship <laughs> is what I'm trying to get at like I think this is just a very blunt telling I don't think the CCP has really had any sort of influence on this biography and she speaks so bluntly about such tragedies that happened during that time which is so enlightening and tragic as well as incredibly fascinating and there's so much uh, strong family ties in this that are inspiring and how devoted they are to one another there's just so much there's so much in this I'm only half done with it I'm not finished with it but it's been such a great companion to read alongside this sci-fi just to give me more context and to continue to just enrich that setting that I've been reading about in in the three body problem it's just been oh my goodness it's been such it's been such a fascinating reading week for me and again it's hard for me not to just go straight into the sequel of three body because i'm still reading this nonfiction, and so i just would like to continue in the vibe that i'm currently in but i'm already behind on what i've the buddy reads that i've set up so that's <laughs> i'm at I, it's a quandary anyway so that's the nonfiction. That's a little bit more about Wild Swans. Highly recommend. I'm not done with it yet, but it highly recommend. Um, I've also been reading Dragon Ball Z. I told you last vlog that we would talk about it this vlog, so here we talk about it. Uh, sorry, this clip is so long. Dragon Ball Z has taken me by surprise. I've read the first five volumes. So much has happened in five volumes, and it's been it's been wild. I so I certainly wasn't expecting this to be to turn into a sci-fi <laughs> but it has so a lot has changed in the narrative structure and in what's going on in goku's life as well as just the setting and what the stakes are like the stakes previous were so low and it was such a fun adventure with collecting these dragon balls so that you can get your one wish and you know you've got this this little kid who's going along on his adventure with his friends no more <laughs> no more the action has amped up significantly what's at stake here as, as far as like worldwide scale has amped up significantly I have experienced personal tragedy with some of the losses that I've incurred in this and it's just it's been fascinating it has been absolutely fascinating to see goku as an adult what his what has changed in his life what has changed for the narrative of this story i have enjoyed it it's been just as goofy but in a totally new way so i'm going to be continuing to read dragon ball z as well as to your eternity uh and I'm enjoying both very, very much. But that's everything that I read this week. I read The Three Body Problem. I read, I started Wild Swans and I have continued, I've been reading Dragon Ball Z. I'd love to chat with you about any of these in the comments if you're interested. I post videos every mon no, every Tuesday and Thursday on this channel, Mondays and Fridays on the other channel, which is always linked in the description. I'll see you again soon, bye.